Welcome back to my channel. I'm sorry to keep you waiting this long, but I've been busy doing a third attempt getting from Norway to Itterkortumit in Scorsby Sound, Greenland. I love it! <laughs> At my first attempt, the Scorsby Sound was packed with ice. The second time, I was stopped by COVID already in the Faroe Islands. Uh, they said that I, I tested positive. As I strongly believe that consistency will get you success, I set out for yet another adventure to try reaching this goal. Some weeks before departure, I had spent a couple of weeks in hospital due to some flaring of my annoying ulcerous colitis. Eventually, my doctor said that I was good to go. So with no time to waste, I wiped the dust of my 46-year-old Contessa 35, Tessie, to give it another shot. So here we go. I've now reached the beautiful archipelago of the Faroe Islands. Although these islands are relatively small, the nature here is as grand, beautiful and endless as your imagination. And somewhere in between it all, you will find the main city of Torshavn. where I was situated with my boat, Tessie. But the boat was unfortunately empty, without her captain. Something rather unforeseen had happened. To find him, we had to fly across the city and land on the local hospital, find our way up to the fourth floor and visit room 11. I had now been staying here for 11 days to try recovering from two very painful surgeries. You can read all about why I had the surgeries in one of my former posts on my Facebook site. Let's say it was pretty bad. So I'm lying in the hospital here in uh, Faroe Islands. They're so nice to me and I'm hoping to get out someday tomorrow. My good friend Paul Jakob was always looking after and providing for me during my stay. And on day 10, I felt good enough to take a hike to get some fresh air into my lungs. And the hike did not disappoint. We started out driving through the world's first underwater roundabout, connecting several of the Faroese Islands. The plan was to visit the most remote places there was to find on the Faroese map. So come along and enjoy the ride.
after being discharged from the hospital, I spent another four days in a hotel for further recovering. Time went by treating myself with medicines and painkillers and watching the weather reports covering the 390 nautical mile or four day journey from the Faroes over to Iceland. Daily stroll looking at my sailboat Tessie. <laughs> it's the highlight of the day, I guess, to get out a little bit before going back to bed and recover. So while waiting for my body to recover, let's have a look at my sponsor, NordVPN. As I've been traveling all around Faroe Islands, I'm impressed to have full 4, even 5G coverage everywhere I go. But as many are connected to the same, often open networks, it's good to know that NordVPN provides the best protection on the market. They hide your IP address to let out any intruders and it works on up to six of your different devices. As you move around geographically, so can you do by changing your location in the app to keep full protection at all times. And if your favorite show is not available in your present country, just switch location to where it is available and enjoy. So head over to nordvpn.com slash Erik to get your exclusive NordVPN deal. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. After 14 days of recovery, things felt somewhat better. Although pains were present as surgery wounds still had some healing to do. To not get too crazy locking myself up, I wanted to feel the fresh ocean air again. It was time to get moving. Okay, welcome back to my channel again. The sun is rising and I'm still in Thorsam. I've been sitting here for 14 days now. I've been in hospital due to some shit happening in my behind, but let's not focus on the negative stuff. Let's focus on the positive stuff. And that is that I'm going to proceed my trip towards Iceland now, and I'm going to a place called uh, Nur Göte and I'm being accompanied by this guy, Mr. Paul Jakob Thompson. Hello. Hello. And he's going to join me up to uh, Nur Göte now, help me sail, because I'm not 100% uh, fresh yet. Uh, there's a little bit left, and, uh, and uh, therefore he's going to help me. So, let's go. On our way out, passing the historical Tinganese, Paul Jakob eagerly explained that the world's first democracy were established just here after the Vikings arrived around year 600, or 1400 years ago. Today it serves as the office for the Prime Minister of Faroe Islands. Göte is only a two hours journey away. Geographically it's a little bit closer to Iceland and would serve as a great quiet place to do the rest of my body recovering while waiting for the right winds to get towards Iceland. After landfall, I got to meet many of Paul Jakob's friends for a good dinner followed by a much needed night of sleep. The next day I woke up to this beautiful little sunny village. The day was spent exploring the islands and when the evening came upon, I was just in time for a little treat. Yes, so I'm on my way after a beautiful day with Paul Jakob to take some unbelievable 
drone pictures all around the islands there. Uh, I'm now going to anchor at uh, at uh, the South Goethe. There's a big concert there now. It's just uh, it's just over here. So I'm gonna, just going to let my anchor go and uh, just have some calm and peace and heal up behind there. <laughs> it's been a rough day. I've been too active and uh, ulcers have uh, gone a little bit up so I have to get them down again. So let's do that. All right. <laughs> After another good night of rest, I wanted to take care of some unfinished business. Last year, on my second attempt to reach Greenland, I got caught in some huge, deadly, vicious ocean currents just at the westerly endpoint of Mykines, which is known to be the worst place for these kinds of currents on the Faroe Islands. Since the ordeal, I felt a strong need to visit this place again from a safe ground, hoping for some drone shots of the currents at its worst. It felt weird to see Mykines reveal out of the dense fog. While waiting for the fog to clear, I spent some hours looking around at this amazing little village. Unfortunately, the fog never cleared up, but just having been there felt relieving. And I could close the chapter once and for all. The waiting time for better health and winds had left its mark on Tessie, lying dead in the water for so long. But during a beautiful day, things seemed to be changing for the better. Well, hello. It's been three weeks of sitting completely still in Torsan, and then I uh, got up to Goethe, and now I'm ready to sail to Iceland. The winds have turned, and uh, we are, um, I'm getting downwind for two days and headwinds towards Vestmanna uh, for one the last day. So it's a three day sail, 390 nautical miles. And I am ready, health is good. And uh, yeah, what can I say? I'm really looking forward to this. It's gonna be amazing. So let's go. It takes some getting used to after staying on land for a longer period and suddenly you're off for a three-day offshore journey. You never feel quite ready for it. You just have to get a grip and go and probably you'll be just fine. I had to make a quick stop at Leirvik to get my diesel tanks topped, as I had a feeling the iron horse could be used for some time according to the pending weather reports. Okay, so now let's go to Iceland. With the boat full of everything needed for the planned trip, I could take a deep breath and set the course out the huge sound between Easteroy and Kalse. Well, let's turn around, get some wind into the sails, and get offshore. Whew. 
With just a tiny breeze, I started out hoisting the mainsail and proceeded along the vast volcanic landscape. I just passed the beautiful village of Jogv, when a well-known happening again occurred. And I freaking lost the drone again. But new one is ready to go. I'm so unlucky. That's number 10, the 10th drone. All right, let's go. On my way, I wanted to pay a visit to a couple of rocky personalities at the north end of the Faroes. This is Risin and Kellingen, or the giant and the witch. A legend tells that they swam all the way from Iceland to the Faroes to try dragging the Faroes back over to Iceland, as they were so envious of these beautiful islands. But time went by as the two 70 meter high giants try their best to move the islands. The sun rised shining on them and they both turn into stone. I don't know if this is true, but a good story luckily doesn't have to be. You can make up your own mind as we leave into the big blue ocean towards Iceland, the land of the giants. That's it, leaving shores of Faroe Islands. How beautiful. It is just a couple of knots wind and uh, the mainsail is just stabilizing the boat, stopping it from going too much from side to side. And I reckon there will be some more wind later tonight so I can uh, hoist boat, boat sails and uh, get anywhere by sail. So let's see what the North Atlantic Ocean has in store for us this time. Wow! Well, seven o'clock in the morning. We sailed 100 nautical miles now. And we're doing uh, four and a half knots. So it's going slow. I think uh, Tessie uh, has grown some beard on her too. So I think, I think we are losing maybe a half knot to 0 0.8 knots or something. So uh, that's a little bit uh, annoying. So I might have to check around for uh, hauling her up on land. And I, uh, when I get to Iceland I'm in uh, Reykjavik. I don't know, but uh, we'll see. All right, so we are a little bit of course, according to the wind. Iceland is here, and we are going here. Uh, and if I go here, we will be more downwind. We will lose even more speed. So I think it's, uh, <laughs> sorry to say, engine time. Because if I don't run my engine, we will be here. Uh, we will be in uh, Vestmanaya very late, and I don't want that because it's uh, headwinds reported already starting Sunday tomorrow. So, so that just means a lot more time in headwinds. So, yeah, that's it. Let's see. The weather is still nice, it's a little bit out of the afternoon now, 
and uh, yeah the good thing about this is it's, the boat is not so lucky you can have a normal life on board so i'm cleaning up a little bit taking the dishes having a phone, phone call home to my mother she's happy about that on the satellite phone and uh, yeah that's what you can do when the weather is good like this Time went by following the same pattern like eating, uploading video, filling diesel, motoring, sailing, resting and sleeping, and just follow the course line towards Iceland, well knowing that Tiger was keeping a sharp lookout. But the rather comfortable and uneventful journey was soon to be replaced by the awaiting headwinds arriving the third and last night. left now and it's gonna be like this all the 60 miles that is left to uh, to Westman IR but that's fine I've done uh, 320 30 good ones so I can't complain but I, I think I'm gonna just host uh, the Genoa and, uh, and, and just sail because this engine uh, with mainsail thing is just uh, pounding the boat too much and Un unnecessary I don't have any plans to reach so let's take it easy I had to slow the boat down to take in a couple of reefs in the mainsail to align the sail area to the wind power then roll out some of the Genoa to get some speed up It's so cool to see how much more powerful sails are compared to the little struggling engine. Speed was instantly almost doubled. Well, a little better. A little better. Let's go. Winds now forced me to tack the remaining 60 nautical miles. 26 knots of wind. They said it was going to be 12, 13, but that's all. That's all, not always the case. So uh, we're getting some pounding here, and uh, but uh, otherwise okay. Wow. So one more tack, and we hopefully can set our bow to Vestmanaya. Iceland here now. Beautiful. Wow. About six miles from shore. So on we went, bashing through every wave as I tacked back and forth, relieving and retightening the sails, searching for the best trim to keep the speed up and fine-tune the hydrovein along the way. Whoa! Good job! Look at that! Cold straight from the box, just as we love it. After 18 hours of tacking against the gale forces, the winds finally came down and I could breathe out and set my course towards some beautiful formations, rising up in the end of the horizon. After all the pain and struggle I've recently been through, I had to pinch myself to believe I was here. Wow, that's best mama I 
that is amazing. Finally, we are here. That was a hard moment to tackle that way in those conditions. Uh, it's like you never think you're gonna make it because it's, it's taking so much time. But suddenly, just suddenly, there we are. And this is it. So now I'm just gonna take down the mainsail and uh, motor myself into the harbor and find a nice place to, to stay and uh, yeah, get to know this place. Wow, that's the Faroe Island, Iceland complete. It's a good feeling. There is a lot of history resting over the volcanic rocks of Vestmannaeyjar. However, the most fascinating one is revealing why the east part of the island is covered in a layer of black lava. In 1973, a big volcanic eruption evolved and forced most of the island's 5,000 inhabitants to evacuate successfully with the help of local fishing boats. The 155 days long eruption created a new 223 meter high mountain and destroyed 417 residents. Talk about the powers of Mother Nature. Also, the killer whale Keiko stayed here from 1998 to 2003 after starring in the well-known Free Willy movies. The purpose was to try to get him back into the oceans as a free animal. Unfortunately, he died in Norway late 2003 at age 27. May he rest in peace. While sailing through the entrance, you can clearly see how the lava streams has floated into the ocean. It's incredible what marvels floating lava can create as it gets cooled down by air and sea. The most known is the unbelievably realistic elephant rock on the island's west side, one in many of nature's wonders. It even got a soul to his eyes. Today, about 4,500 peoples live in peace and quiet here, so far without any new eruptions. Sliding in through the entrance between huge volcanic cliffs is a small adventure by itself. I had to pinch myself again to believe I've actually made it here. I didn't know exactly where to tie up, as there is no dedicated guest pontoons here. So I just picked a spot and it turned out well. So that is Vestmanaeja. My god, what a beautiful place. I just had a visit of the police here and uh, they told me that this will be the most beautiful place in, uh, in Iceland. Period, and um, I, I will not argue with them. Uh, yeah, so now I think I'm just gonna have a beer on the on the side here on this house. Uh, I'm uh, tied up to a pub, so that's uh, that's not too bad. So yeah, thank you very much for uh, watching, and uh, I will see you in the next video where I will go to Reykjavik on Iceland. It's about 100 nautical miles, 120 nautical miles from here. About 24 hours, 22 hours. Okay, bye. So stay on board for chapter 4 sailing from Vestmannaeyjar to Reykjavik, the main city of Iceland, passing by a very special lighthouse. Getting close to one amazing spot now. And having a rainy downwind blast along the beautiful Icelandic coast. Stay tuned. Okay, so thank you for watching the video. Hope you liked it. It was a big job editing it. 
so I hope you enjoyed it and yeah thank you for all the support it's so important for me with all that support I, it's, I so appreciate it and if you want to follow me on Facebook or Instagram uh, you can do that much appreciated and Patreon you can donate whatever funds you you want every time I upload a video uh, or you can hit me up at PayPal and support me there for whatever you want and of course uh, t-shirts merchandise link uh, about here I think or here I don't know and also uh, US and uh, Europe link under the videos okay so I will see you in chapter 4 in some in a couple of weeks thanks